the best Pokemon team around. Machamp, Tyrogue, Hitmonlee, Machoke, Hitmonchan, and the Hulk. Wait, the Hulk's a Pokemon card? WTF, my height? What's up, YouTube? Alex here, aka Inch95, bringing you guys a crazy deck idea. This was just going to be a standard deck profile, but I figured I'd be a, it'd be a crazy deck idea since uh, I promised you guys I'd be profiling uh, Batlin Boxers, and they're really an off-the-wall deck, a really new archetype, so I'm just going to hop right into the deck profile because uh, some of you guys may or may not know what these cards do, so I want to explain some of them pretty uh, lightweight in detail, more or less. Um, but yeah, this is kind of like my rough draft build. There's a lot of room for changes if you want to like change your deck up. This is just suited to my playstyle. Um, but for the most part, I like my build. My first rough draft was pretty solid, so I made very few changes. I believe it's a 41-42 card deck. Um, I'm probably going to cut it down a little more and maybe just change a couple changes, but I'll show you guys eventually. So the first card we have, um, I'm going to explain some of these cards because, like I said, some of you guys might not know what they are. This is, um, Batlin Boxer Headgear. Basically, he's a 1,000 attack by 1,800, um, Armageddon Knight. And when he's summoned, you can send a Battling Boxer monster from your deck to the grave. And basically what you're normally going to be sending is this guy, which is Counterpunch, more often than not. You can also send Glassjaw, but the reason you send the Counterpunch turn one is because usually you don't want it. Glassjaw, he's... Well, I'm going to explain all these, but I'll explain, I'll explain the, uh, like the some of the combos later on. But basically you're either going to send Counterpunch or Glassjaw. Turn one, you usually send Counterpunch, because when Glassjaw is sent to the grave for uh, an effect of a uh, Battle and Boxer monster, is it Battle and Boxer or just... Yeah, for, for by a card effect, it doesn't even matter what effect, so it could just be by any effect. You basically add one battling boxer from your grave to your hand, but except himself. So you can't like send him and then add him to your hand. But the reason you send him is basically he's a Kalut from the grave or hand. So anyway, but the great part about him is you could just summon him, send counter punch to the grave turn one, and you could like either set a back row or just pass. And then he can't be destroyed uh once per turn, uh if he's face up attack position. So he's kinda like um he's almost like a mini spear reaper, so but he has to be in attack position, so keep that in mind. You can't, like, eventually, like, put him to defense and expect him to live one battle. I mean, he has high defense, but that's the great part about him. So he's, like, a trump blocker and an Armageddon Knight. Uh, Glassjaw. He's probably the most bipolar card in the deck. He is a 2,000 by 0 monster. Um, and basically what he does is when he's literally just a, a beater. That's really all you use him for. But when he's attacked at any time, uh, he's destroyed, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, so he has that utopia effect. However, when he's uh, sent to the grave by a card effect, you can add one Batlin, Mox Batlin Boxer monster from your grave to your hand. The only issue with this early game, or turn one or turn two, is if you don't have a Batlin Boxer monster in your grave, and you just summon him and use him as a beat stick, and they just summon and attack him, not only is he going to die, and you're not going to be able to search anything if you don't have a Batlin Boxer monster in your grave, but on top of that, they're going to get the replay and be able to attack you for direct damage. So, this card is probably the only bipolar card in the deck, because for some reason I tend to draw him really, really early. But uh, I like him in the sense that he's a free beater, and uh, you can send him to the grave at will pretty much with this guy in mid to late game. You can add a, back your Bogart Knight with this deck, which I'll show you guys some of the cards later. This one is called Batlin Boxer Spar. Basically what he is, is he's kind of like, I guess you could think of him in a sense like a, an emergency teleport type monster for the deck. I can't really think of a great example of a monster. But basically what he reads is, if you, ha you have to have another Batlin Boxer monster on your field. And you can special summon him from your hand and attack or defense, regardless of what you want. And then if you do, you can't conduct your battle phase for the rest of this turn. So, from my understanding, he's worded the same way as Bahamut Shark. Which is basically, you guys, if you guys know Bahamut Shark, like you can bring him out with two materials. Attack with Bahamut Shark. And then main phase two uses effect to bring out like Mermail Abistrite or Leviathan. This guy, and from what I've understood and the way he's he's basically worded, is the same as Bahamut Shark. So... Turn one, what you can do is suppose you have headgear and this guy in your hand. What you can do is you can normal summon headgear, send a counter punch from your deck to the grave, attack for a thousand, then main phase two since your battle phase already occurred and it only says for the rest of this turn, for the rest of the turn, just like um, Bahamut Shark. If it said you can't conduct your battle phase this turn, then you wouldn't be able to do this. But it, because it says the rest of this turn, then this is a completely legal play. You can special summon this guy in defense or attack mode, main phase two, and like even in attack mode would probably be best because like let's say they max C on this, like it's not a reveal effect, so if you it's an enhanced summon, so if you just if they max C here, you can just pass and 
and make it a minus one because you have that counter punch in the grave. And they're going to need a, at least a 2,000 beater to get over him because his attack will go to 2,200 if you counter punch. And he lives once per battle, or you could just use counter punch on him. And you could just stop right there. But the main reason for this is if they don't, like barring a maxi, and if you don't want to keep going, you can overlay for your main beater, which is Yoke, which I'll explain him Yoke later, but basically he's like a quick special summon, and he gets you into your exceeds as fast as possible, a lot of your rank 4s. Um, the next guy is Batlin Boxer Switcher Titter, I can't even say his name, it's like Switching Titty Tur, I don't know how you say it. Basically he's a 1500 by 1400 uh, Bogard Knight for this deck. The thing about him is, so when he's normal summoned, he gets a Batlin Boxer monster from the from the grave to the field. So he's literally a Debris Dragon. But um, the only issue with him is, he says that you cannot special summon any monsters during the turn you activate this effect, except Batlin Boxer monsters. So you can't, like, overlay for, like, a different rank 4. Like, you can't overlay for, like, Dweller. You can't overlay for, like, I don't know, Cowboy. You can't overlay for that. You're mainly going to go into your Yoke, because he's the only one that I would opt to run. The other two kind of suck. Like, the Cestus sucks. And I don't really like the rank-up version of this deck because it's really gimmicky. Um, this, in my opinion, is the most consistent version of this deck. But you can make Yoke, and you can just, like, summon this guy, get, like, a glass draw back or whatever, um, attack with both, that, both, and then make Yoke, which is really good, and it's a really solid play. So, um, And believe it or not, Maxi really doesn't hurt this deck. This is the only card that's affected by Maxi, but you could just stop if you have counter punches so your monster doesn't die. Um, counter punch. He's one of the most unique cards in this deck because he's a Kalut from the hand and from the grave. Basically, if he's in your hand or in your grave um, during during either you or your opponent's turn, when a Batman Boxer monster attacks or is attacked, you can remove him from your hand, or you can, if you have one in your grave, you can remove it from the grave to have that monster gain a thousand until the end phase of this turn. And you can only the only, the reason he's um, great is he pretty much allows you to get over any monster um, that's not really an exceed. I mean, obviously there's a lot of exceeds, but any basic monster you can virtually get over with this deck. And then on top of that, he can only be used once per turn, so keep that in mind. He has zero attack, which is kind of unfortunate, because there's times where I wish I could summon him. And he's, the only other negative part about him is he's the only level 3 in the deck, so he's probably the only one you really can't exceed with, because you don't really need to run rank 3s in his deck, and I, there's really just not enough room in the extra deck. Um, for the That's it for the battle and boxer monsters. For the rest of the monsters, I opted to run two burners. And by the way, I'm using a couple different sleeves, because I had to take out some cards from other decks and three blasters and the reason we run these is number one it gives you access to to basically you know draco sack and big eye it gives you a free beater if you ever need it thins out the deck and is like another mini engine in itself but on top of that these guys are all fire and so is your main exceed so you can bring out blaster by removing these or you can use blaster blaster destruction effect to discard himself and another fire monster so you could discard like him in a counter punch which really isn't that big of a deal because you can use the counter punch from the grave and pop a card on the field, and I really, really like this, because it gives you a lot of versatility in your plays, and it just really helps thin out your deck, and this is a fantastic engine, and obviously, like all the other um, elemental dragons or dragon rollers, um, any deck that's like fire, wind, or water, or earth, you can pretty much splash these guys in, you know, barring that specific uh, attribute. Um, the one off-the-wall card that I run that I haven't seen anybody else run is UFO Turtle. <laughs> And a lot of people don't, might, may or may not know what this card is. It's one of these old school cards. I was looking through some of my commons and swap boxes and just a bunch of like old school cards. And I came across this card. And it's a fire monster, 1400 by 1200 defense. He's a machine effect. And basically all he is is a mystic tomato. And when he's destroyed about it, you can get a fire monster with 1500 or less attack in face up, I believe it's face up attack position. Oh, it doesn't, yeah, face up attack position. And he's great just because he virtually like, he speeds up your deck. He's kind of like an off-the-wall monster. I wouldn't run more than one. Um, you can get, if you're ever like in a really like shitty position where your opponent's kind of just like pushing you with like three monsters, and you have this set, and they attack into it, that's one chump blocker out of the way. And then you can bring him out, and then if you already have the counter punch in your grave or in your hand, number one, the first time you, they attack this, if, if you don't have one in your grave, you can force them to attack this the first time. And then... You'll take the damage, and he lives once because he's in face-up attack position. And then on the last monster, you can activate Counter Punch from your hand, removing this to give him 2,000 attack. I mean, there's a lot of cool, unique plays, and it gives you just another Batlin Boxer to go off with. Um, and it just speeds up your plays, but I would only run one of it. It's, pretty, it's really just a unique uh, Mystic Tomato, in a sense. So I really like that card. I think it has potential. Um, again, sorry, some of the sleeves are kind of off. Um, they're all white, but some of them are Ultra Pros, unfortunately. <laughs> I just had to take out cards from other decks just so, because people were asking me to max rarity this deck, apparently. Um, 
And just bear in mind, this deck is a really cheap deck to make. You guys can make it, you know, all low strategy for all you want. Like, I'll show you guys later some of the lower end, end stuff. I opted to run, just like E-Dragons and a lot of the decks, three Maxis, three Veilers. This hinders pretty much all the top decks right now. And I would say it's a must in the Veilers you can Synchro with. Um, and you can use Blaster to Synchro with him. And it gives you a lot of options in to, against, like, your faster decks against you. Like, you can make Colossal Fighter. You can make Crimson Blader lock up opponents. You can make a Taster. Um, so he's great. And then Maxi just helps speed your deck up. Um, that's it for the monsters. I believe it's 30 monsters, or if I'm not mistaken. Actually, no, hold on. My bad. I believe it is 27 monsters. Because in, in my other version I'm testing, I'm also testing Swift Scarecrows in this deck. Um, right now I'm actually running Threatening Roars. But uh, anyway, for the spells, we only run 7 spells. And they're really simple. We run the Reinforcement of the Army. It searches all your Battling Boxer monsters because they're Warrior. Um, I only run one duality. Uh, I don't think two's that needed. I, I didn't really, really like it. Sometimes it got like, I wanted to special summon a yoke and I couldn't. And he's pretty much your optimal turn one play because he can't really be destroyed. They have to dedicate resources unless they have a compulsory evacuation device or like a big monster plus breakthrough skill to get rid of him. But uh, one duality is enough. You could run a second one if you want. If you run, if I, if I were to run Scarecrows, I would run the, a second pot of duality. But in this case, I'm only running one duality. And then we run just the staples, one Book of Moon, one Monster Reborn, the Dark Hole, and the Heavy Storm. And then for the traps, we run two Breakthrough Skills. It's, I believe, eight traps, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, eight traps. Uh, two Breakthrough Skills, uh, just more negation. I wouldn't run more than two. Uh, three Compulsories and three Threatening Roars. These are all just for chain ability. Uh, you can opt to run, like, Scarecrows if you want. Like I said, you can cut, like, one Threatening Roar, uh, maybe the UFO Turtle, and I don't know. I don't know what else you could cut. You could probably cut that. So like, you could cut this. You could cut the Threatening Roar. You could cut the Turtle or just add it in there. Like, I don't know. Maybe a Duality or something if you really wanted to. For two Scarecrows, if you wanted more diversity, if you didn't really want to run the three Threatening Roars. This just helps you live. Um, the Threatening Roars, like, this deck is really annoying, especially if you're playing against, like, obviously it's a more casual deck. So, like, like if you're playing against, like, slower decks, like, around the same pace, if you have a Yoke on the field... Or just little monsters that they, like, Valored. Like, suppose they Valored your Switch Hitter, which is the Bogard Knight. If they Valored him, you can kind of protect him with Compulses or Compulse him back to your hand or Threatening Roar. There's a lot of optimal, like, not optimal, but a lot of potential plays that you could do with this deck. And I feel like these traps, like, the fact that they're all chainable not only makes it difficult to read and play around, but it also offers a lot of diversity. Um, and that's why I opted to run a bunch of chainable traps. I, I, you, I never not once wanted Psalm Judgments all morning because there's scenarios with this deck where, like, if you don't get going with, like, a Yoke or some Exceeds or some Synchros, um, you could be in a really bad position. So I feel this is this is the most optimal trap lineup for right now. Um, that, that's the that's basically the deck list as far as, like, the main deck. It's it's nothing, like, too out of the ordinary, but I, I suited it to my style. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the extra deck. Um, for the extra deck... Ooh, here, let me put the Synchros in the back. For the extra deck, we run three Battle and Boxer Lead Yoke, and he is basically, in a sense, your boss monster as far as exceeds. He's a rank 4 fire type, so you can use him with Blaster if you ever need to remove him. He has 2200 attack, 2000 defense, and basically, you need two Battle and Boxer monsters. Unfortunately, he's not generic, but pretty much that's the only way you're going to be making it. And basically, what he reads is basically, if he... Here, let me read it to you. Um, if a Battle and Boxer monster or monsters you control would be destroyed... By battle or by card effect, you can detach one XYZ material from this card instead of destroying one of those monsters. When an XYZ material or materials is detached from this card, this card gains 800 attack. So basically, let's say you have a lead yoke on the field and they try to like attack it or something, or let's say, I don't know. Yeah, let's say they just try to attack it and you can detach a material, he's going to live, and then he's going to gain 800 attack for one detach. That puts him at 3,000. If he gets de if he detaches both his materials, that makes him a 3,800 beater. And he's really a bitch to get rid of when he's backed up by cards like Compulse, Breakthrough, Threatening Roar, uh, Book of Moon, and just a generic hand trap, whether it be Valor or Maxi. He's really difficult to get rid of, um, unless your opponent, like I said, is running uh, Compulsories, which against like a lot of the top tier decks right now. Um, except maybe Evil Swarms, they're not really running, like, so I guess you could say some Prophecies are running Compulse, but not too many. Um, but he's really difficult to get rid of. I've been playing him a lot in, like, solar formats. I haven't really tested this deck too much against faster decks. But, uh, I felt like this is, it's, it's a really stable card. It's really your most solid turn one opening with Spar and, like, Headgeared, sending a Counterpunch to the Grave. And you can, there's a lot of potential for OTKs and, you know, just big pushes that you could do with him. So I really, really like this card. And uh, I I, th I could see him even in future formats. Obviously, you noted like you guys probably noticed like I'm not running like lances or any of that stuff. This is suited for this format, 
But uh, potentially, like, let's say next format develops into a format where pe more people are running deep prisons, compulsory, things like that. Um, you could just run Forbidden Lance in this deck to protect him, and then he really is, becomes indestructible and he gains his boost. So, I mean, there's a lot of cool plays you could do with him, and I feel he's he's a great card in the deck. I don't run the Cestus or the other guy. I took out Cestus recently for, uh, for a couple Synchros. Um, just because there's never a scenario where I wanted to bring him out, and I don't run the rank-up version because it's too slow and too gimmicky, and there's never a scenario where I really wanted to get rid of my yoke when I had the card on the field. Um, for the rest of the Exceeds, we run one Abyss Dweller, uh, Diamond Direwolf, Black Ship of Corn, Cowboy. Uh, we run Blasters and Monster Reborn, so we can make these against Dragons, or we could just bring back Blasters and use Burners and Reborns. Um, we run Draco Sack and Big Guy. You just need one of each. You don't need more. Um, you don't have to like run these if you really don't want to, but I would suggest them if you have access to them. This is just a fun deck, so it's not really meant to be too um, expensive, but these are really the only expensive cards. Like Everything else is pretty simple to get. Um, the last two cards we run I recently added are Heroic Champion Excalibur, because everything's Warrior. Shout out to uh, my homegirl, Star Strike Duelist X, or X Star Strike Duelist Samantha. Uh, she gave this to me. I was looking for one for the longest time as far as... Uh, just a heroic champion, because this is my only ghost rare I've ever had. And I absolutely hate ghost rares, but for some reason this ghost rare looks really, really dope. She hooked me up with this uh, a while ago, and uh, I was looking for one, and I was like, oh shit, I actually have one in my calculator case, and pulled it out. So yeah, heroic champion Excalibur. Uh, this card's great. It creates a lot of potential OTKs. Like, if you have, like, a yoke, and you're able to get him on the board with, like, a switch hitter or whatever, you detach two materials, and if you detach, like, I don't know, you could put, like, What's a good example? You could put glass jaws in the grave. You could put a ton of stuff in the grave, and he becomes four thousand. So he's great. The last card that I run is also supposed to be. It's supposed to be the blade armor ninja, the double attack one. I couldn't find one, so I'm temporarily temporarily running a shockmaster, which I'm also trying to find a way to add him in. I might cut one yoke. Like three yoke is a necessity, but I've noticed a lot of the time, like if they're gonna like the only real way they're gonna get rid of this is like compulse, which like yeah, I guess you could say breakthrough skill plus run it over, but I'm probably gonna protect it if anything with like threatening roars in my own compulse. But uh, I might cut this out for one of the yokes out for a Shockmaster, because I've noted there's times where I could Shockmaster against Dragons, um, against Spellbooks, against, like, a ton of decks, and they're not really hindered too much by a lot of the, like, cards, a lot of the, like, a lot of the hand traps that people are using against this deck. So, uh, yeah, this is supposed to be a uh, Blade Armor Ninja, because you can attack twice, and he offers OTK potential, just like Heroic Champion Excalibur. But, uh, yeah, and I'll probably try to add in Shockmaster eventually, but right now this is just a 15-card extra deck, so if, I'll, if I find a Heroic Champion Excalibur, er, a Blade Armor Ninja, I'll definitely be at adding it in there. I just, I highly suggest that one to make note of that because I just couldn't find one for this filming. Um, for the Synchros, we run Cataster because we have Veilers and almost everything's level 4 in this deck. Uh, Scrap Dragon for your level 8s with Blast there. Colossal Fighter. Uh, he's great. Keep in mind though, if you ever try to against Dragons, if you try to uh, do like Colossal plays to suicide into their Blasters, opposing Scrap Dragons, Crimson Bladers, uh, etc., keep in mind that you have uh, pretty much all your monsters are Warrior. I actually had a couple brain farts the past couple nights, and uh, I forgot that he gains attack, and I couldn't do the suicide play. So make sure you're playing Colossal Fighter really, really smart. But uh, there's a lot of cool scenarios you could do with him, and he gains attack because pretty much, like I said, all your stuff is warrior. Uh, so he gains that attack, and for your opponent's warriors, obviously. And the Crimson Blader because you can lock up opposing dragon decks. You can lock up uh, you can lock up a ton of decks with this, like a lot of rogue decks. Uh, yeah, so you can use Blaster with that. That's really the only way you're going to be synchroing to make your level 8s. And then the last two cards I just have are just some tokens for your Draco sack. So that's the deck. Let me know what you guys thought of it. I'm sorry this deck profile was so long. This is, like I said, it was a crazy deck idea, but I had to explain a lot of the stuff for people, what, like some cards that people may or may not know. I'm sure a lot of people may not know these cards. Um, they're fairly new. They just came out in uh, Lord Attackion. I'm sure some people have seen them. But it's a really, really fun deck nonetheless. I'm going to flash through the deck again. Um, I recommend it if you want to try something fun. I've been playing with this. I've been playing with Bujins online. I've just been playing a lot of fun decks. I haven't been playing too much meta. Like I've been playing like Dueling Network a lot lately with one of my close friends. Uh, I don't really play against a lot of like a lot of my viewers just because like I don't know. I guess they take it too seriously. Like uh, me, I'm really competitive. But like when I play with friends, like we uh, we goof off. But like at the same time, we're being like really competitive. Like we try to mind fuck each other a lot and. I don't know, but as far as that, like, I guess you guys can hit me up, I might play a little bit. I'm not really, like, every time I've been playing, like, even an Unrated on Dueling Network, it's, it's just been, like, meta decks and shit. Like, who the fuck plays Prophecy and, like, Dragons in, um, in Unrated, like, really? Like, I just went there just to play a couple fun decks, but if you guys want to see, uh, I've been working on Bujins. Obviously, the cards aren't out yet, and a lot of their support is still not released, even on Dueling Network. I'm sure they're going to be getting more support. I don't know all their support in the OCG. 
but uh, I made a couple rough drafts of the deck on Dueling Network. I hate doing Dueling Network deck profiles, but I think it'd be a really unique thing, because like, lately I've been looking a lot into the future as far as card and archetypes and whatnot. So if you guys would like to see Bujins eventually, and just like an overview and my thoughts on them, and their potential, and a potential skeleton deck list um, that you guys could try out, thumbs up this video, I'd really appreciate it. If you guys enjoyed this deck profile, also give it a like and comment down below. I know some people were bitching yesterday. I posted uh, an old video I had. I think it was like Spellbooks, one of my old my friend's Spellbooks. And there was just endless bitching, not only about the video that was like only like literally a week and a half old, two weeks old. Um, and I just never posted it. So I was like, you know what, I'll just throw it up there. Why not? Um, and it just like a bunch of bitching about the intro and all this shit. Like honestly, like if that's really what people are finding, like, if that's people's, like, legitimate reason for bitching, then so be it. I, I really don't care, like, people bitching about the intro and all this stuff. Like, if you want to go make me a really nice intro and a really nice outro and all this other fancy stuff and a shorter one with different music that you like, please, by all means, go ahead, go make me one. I'd really appreciate that. And I'll try it out and see how people like it. If you think you can do better, do it. Comment down below, PM me, message me on Facebook. I got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Skype. Um, my fan page, you can hit me up with all those things in the description. There's a plethora of ways to get in contact with me if you want to make me a new intro. Aside from that, quit the bitching. Like, I'd really appreciate that. Um, especially those people, like, some people don't mind. Like, I still appreciate those people that are showing me love regardless of everything. I mean, I'm bringing you guys, like, deck profiles, like, card reviews, like, just a ton of different stuff. And I'm just trying to bring a lot of diversity to my channel and show you guys pretty much videos and uh, bring you guys videos every day or every other day just because I'm free now. And, yeah. So, rant, that's my little segment of rant. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's the Battle and Boxer deck profile. And what other videos do I have coming? I'm probably going to be filming later on today, and I'll probably be posting tomorrow. I will be posting probably either the Rarity Horror video or Side Deck to 20 video. I don't know. Uh, I have a couple other things. People are asking for a couple other rants. I have prize support rants, uh, things that I could film. So, I'm going to film a couple of those today. And then I'll have I'll have a couple of one of them up tomorrow and probably one up on uh, Sunday. So stay tuned. I'd really appreciate that. I'm have a ton of videos coming for you guys, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy all those. So thumbs up if you guys enjoy all these videos. Um, and yeah, if you're gonna bitch and dislike the video because of the intro, I could care less. Like honestly, like, if that's your reason, I really don't give a fuck. It doesn't hinder me. It doesn't bother me. So uh, yeah, love you guys. Peace. Thumbs up. And uh, yeah, that was a crazy deck idea. <laughs>